All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this new radio. It is the Retivus H1. Anyhow, it is a dual band HT, does 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and it uh, does FM analog and it does DMR or digital mobile radio. Before we get too far down the road, I did want to say that I was contacted by my friends at Retivus and asked if I would review this radio. Of course, I said yes, because I like taking a look at radios when they come out on the market, especially ones from Retivus. Anyhow, they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this and other video reviews. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. All that being said, I did want to say it's a pretty nice radio. It does up to 6 watts of output power. It is USB-C rechargeable. Ooh, that's all the rage these days. And it holds 500,000 digital contacts, which is pretty impressive. And it comes with a pretty neat uh, CPS software, computer programming software software. We might take a look at that in a different video, but not today. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to test the spectral purity or the output of this radio using the Tiny SA Ultra, which is right here. And I just love these things. In order to make this happen, we are going to use what I call my big ass attenuator. When we connect this up, we're going to use a piece of coaxial cable to connect to the big ass attenuator. The big ass attenuator is rated up to 100 watts, way more than we need, but it does 40 dB of attenuation. Now, a 5 watt output signal is around 37 dBm, so this will take our signal down to a negative 3. In order to get the best results on a tiny SA Ultra, we want to be somewhere around negative 20 to 25 dB for our input signal. So what we've done is we've also connected here a little teeny attenuator, and this is a 30 dB attenuator. So between the two of these, we're going to have around 70 dB of attenuation. We'll configure the tiny SA. I'll show you how to do that so you can play along at home if you desire. Again, what I want to mention is, is that you want the attenuator that can handle the highest wattage power output connected first to your radio. If you connect it the other way around, you potentially could damage your tiny attenuator. Okay, let's take a minute or two to talk a little bit about test criteria. And what this says here is the mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitting or an external RF power amplifier transmitting on a frequency between 30 and 225 megahertz must be 60 dB below the mean power of the fundamental. The fundamental is the transmit signal. In this case, we're going to tr transmit a signal on 146.52 megahertz. For a transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, that's this radio, the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts and must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission but not be reduced below the power of 10 microwatts. We get some exemption rules down here for radios built before 1977, but that ain't this one. So down here at the bottom, I did a little quick math. 25 microwatts is 0 0.000025 watts, or negative 16.02 dBm. Keep that in mind, because we're going to see it a little bit later. Let's set this up with the tiny SA, and I'll show you the configuration. So I got this out of the instruction manual. And I think earlier I said this radio does 6 watts, but according to the manual, it looks like it does 5. Anyhow, this is the transmitter specifications for TX power or transmit power. If you take a look, it says 5 is less than or equal to 5 watts. If you take a look at middle, it says it's 3 watts, and low says it's 0.5 watts. And you might say, well, why in the world would it want 0.5 watts? If you're using this radio with a DMR hotspot or a digital hotspot or some sort of Raspberry Pi open spot hotspot, you don't want to transmit at very high power, so you want to transmit around that 0.5 watts. Only use the amount of power that you need to make the signal. Transmitting higher to that might damage your hotspot, turn into a cold spot. All right, so here you can see the tiny SA is projected on the screen of my computer to make it easy for everybody to see and read. Maybe not understand, but at least see and read. Also, if we take a quick look at the radio, we had to change our frequency to 146.55. Not a big deal. We had to do that because we were getting some interference. So we uh, QS wide to a different frequency. Now let's take a quick look at our tiny SA Ultra down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my menu. And I'm using an antenna here as my stylus because I can't find my stylus. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to go to measure. And maybe this is not the best stylus. 
Oh no, measure. There we go. And I'm going to pick harmonic. And when it does that, it asks me for a frequency. I'm going to go 146.55 megahertz. And now it's going to ask me for a span. You'll see the tiny SA will be divided into distinct groups, each one at a harmonically related frequency to the fundamental. When I do this, let's just say I want to look at 10 megahertz slices. You can set that to whatever you want. But now you can see the screen is divided into blue lines. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate the menu and I'm going to go to level. When I do this, there's an option for external gain. This is where I account for my attenuator and we have negative 70 dB of external gain because that's how much attenuation we're using. We type in negative 70 and we hit times one. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw that line at negative 16.02. So I'm going to go back and I believe it's under display. Let's see if I can get this stylus to work. Display. There's draw line and I'm going to go negative 16.02 times 1. Now we'll see a threshold line at the bottom of the screen and that lets us easily at a glance see where our signals are. So I have the radio set for low power, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to key this baby up and see what happens. So we're transmitting, and this looks pretty good so far. Let's see where this thing settles out. So we have a signal at around 29.5, maybe it's a little bit higher dBm, but this thing is clean as a whistle. I'm actually a little bit surprised and quite impressed. All right, I'm going to stop keying up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change... Oh, I'm going to change my power levels, and I'm going to go to the second highest power. And I haven't figured out the quick setting to do this, so it takes me a little while. So I go to my settings, I go to channel, info, and it's transmit power. And I'm going to go to middle, select, set successful, back. All right, let's transmit and see what happens. All right, here we go. And we're getting about 35.5 dBm for our fundamental frequency, and that's looking just fine. Everything's below the line. We have no harmonics or spurious emissions. Well done, Retivas. I'm going to let off the key, and then I'm going to set it for high power. Okay, we're set for high power. Let's go ahead and key up and see what we get. Okay, we're getting around 39.2 dBm, which is higher than 5 watts. So this thing puts out more than 5 watts. And there's also some attenuation, likely, given the coaxial cable, the adapters, and the attenuators. We probably get a little bit of loss there, but this is pretty good. Um, higher than 5 watts, and it is completely crystal clear clean. So uh, with that, I'm going to unkey, and I'm going to say this thing puts out a pretty clean signal. Impressive. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you very much for watching.